Hello, this is Matt on the Moon Lambeau channel. Did you know that you're too stupid to decide whether or not you should buy and hold XRP? Well, I don't think that, but the government does. <laughs> I want to talk a little bit about that. There are a couple tweets. Attorney John, D John Deaton uh, picked up on something that uh, Attorney Arturo Portilla wrote about, which is on your screen right now. Uh, there's uh, two attorneys within the XRP community. John Deaton, of course, being rather uh, XRP famous, if you will, uh, for seeking to intervene in the SEC versus Ripple case on behalf of over 17,000 XRP holders. Uh, also, I want to talk about a couple video clips that have been circulating uh, pretty heavily throughout the XRP community today on social media, specifically Twitter here, um, having to do with XRP getting relisted and uh, the price ultimately blasting out to all-time highs as a result. And you've got Max Kaiser uh, just not saying nice things about XRP, so it's going to be a fun one. Uh, but I do want to be clear at the outset, I don't have a financial background of any kind. I am not offering financial advice, and you definitely should not buy or sell anything because of anything I say or write. I'm just an enthusiast who likes making YouTube videos as a fun hobby about Ripple and XRP and unicorns. Mo this is mostly a unicorn channel. You guys know that. You come here for the hot unicorn news and action. So here's a tweet from XRP community member and attorney Arturo Portilla. Democracy needs looser regulations for retail uh, private equity investments and stricter regulations for accredited investors. And so indeed, uh, in order to in invest in whatever the hell you want, you have to be a quote unquote accredited investor, which means that you have to be making, uh, if you're single, at least $200,000 a year if married uh, to 300,000 uh, collectively, or you have to have a net worth of at least a million dollars because apparently having money and a big salary means that you're thought okay, that's that's the that's what the government's decided. You otherwise you are too good for yourself. Uh, or, or, to, or, or your what's the, what was I trying to say there? It's like my brain just stopped working. It's like a couple of the, the cylinders stopped firing right there. Ah, I'm losing that bow. <laughs> but uh, it's like uh, it, it's like the, the government effectively thinks that you're like a a Bitcoin maxi troll because a Bitcoin maxi troll, mind you, uh, they um, they need help getting their shirts on in the morning, and uh, they wear Velcro shoes and helmets because that's safer for them. And so they kind of look at you like that, basically. Like, you can't make decisions for yourself. Now, me on the flip side, I'm all about personal responsibility. I'm, I'm a big fan of that. You, if you invest in something and you completely get wrecked, uh, assuming that uh, it's it's not some sort of uh, scam, that's your own damn fault. Like, that, that's the way that I look at it. People can be tricked, and I, I'm not, uh, you know, obviously scam would be a whole different situation here. Um, and, and so if you think about it, as it pertains to XRP specifically, you know, like, let's say that the SEC is absolutely correct, and and uh, XRP uh, is, by, by the nature of it existing, is a security. Well, given that it hasn't been approved by the SEC, that means that you literally, uh, since you're not sophisticated enough, I mean, the vast majority of you out there listening, you are not sophisticated enough, the government says, to actually purchase XRP. I find that offensive, frankly. Um, and so Attorney John Deaton retweeted that from Arturo Portilla and wrote the following. He wrote, uh, Arturo is 100% on. Under Regulation D of the SEC, the term accredited investor refers to investors who are financially sophisticated and have a reduced need for the protection provided by regulatory disclosure filings. Accredited investors include high net worth individuals like banks, insurance companies, brokers, and trusts. Uh, now, who needs protection from whom? Yeah, exactly. So <laughs> I'll tell you what, I feel like we need protection from the SEC because I don't think that they have our interests in mind. But if it's up to them, uh, unless think about it, if you're going to purchase XRP from anyone, you would need to be an accredited investor because the SEC hasn't outright approved S S uh, XRP. Uh, you'd, you'd have to have at least a million dollar net worth or be making at least, if you're single, at least $200,000 a year. What the hell is that? Does, does that make sense? I don't know. I'm just, I'm not a fan. I'm willing to be persuaded, but I, I've never liked the setup there. You know, people just need to be responsible for themselves when it comes to investing. All right, so now on to this. This is the video. I'm not going to play the clip, but this has been circulating. It's a clip with uh, uh, BitBoy Crypto and a few others, including uh, this guy from Decentralized Chain. I wasn't familiar with it, but um, he was saying a bunch of stuff about XRP. Mostly good, mostly fine. Um, he was talking about the idea of XRP, frankly, uh, getting relisted. He firmly happens to believe that uh, this, you know, Ripple get a slap on the wrist. XRP will be resume trading in the United States, which we desperately need because there's only a few cryptocurrency exchanges in the United States where you can buy and sell XRP right now. And, and that stuff I actually agree with. Um, and you can see Panda Ripple XRP uh, wrote the following because he tweeted this out. 
Uh, Relist is inevitable, and XRP will be the only coin that will experience the Coinba Coinbase effect twice. Um, yeah, about the Coinbase effect. Um, I actually do happen to feel a little bit differently about that. Um, I don't recall XRP jumping up when it was listed on Coinbase last time. It, it, it got listed, with, a, if I'm not mistaken, um, with a, a number of other coins, and it was a big nothing, frankly. You know, and so that's why, I mean, sure, that, that, admittedly, fine. When we get clarity and XRP gets relisted on, on exchanges throughout the United States, I could see the whole, like, like global XRP markets taken off. Yes, absolutely, I could certainly see that. I think it's reasonable to suspect that. But when that happens, which I think it will anyway, I'm not going to say it's because of Coinbase specifically. Uh, they will just be a little piece of the equation here. And that's why I, I tweeted this out and wrote the following. Coinbase is not the kingmaker it once was. If things go favorably for XRP from a legal perspective, I think all U.S. exchanges will relist. That does matter. And so then I wrote, uh, the guy in the video thinks the U.S. is a much larger slice of the market in reference to XRP, but that's factually incorrect. It's somewhere in the neighborhood of 10% of the global market. And so that's really the only thing that I took beef with. The rest of it, I, I seem to think, make, made a lot of sense. And so... Uh, yeah, of course, XRP gets relisted at some point, it lasts through all-time high, uh, and enters a new realm of price discovery. I believe that will happen. And, and again, don't buy or sell because I'm saying that. I could be wrong. I'm just sharing, sharing what I personally suspect will be the case here. But um, I, I also think even without sufficient regulatory clarity, I think that's going to happen anyway, because you know how humans behave. They will speculate on anything and everything. And if, if you look what happened last market cycle, everything took off. And it wasn't about fundamentals. It's about money circulating through the space, and humans are behaving like that again. So I think it's going to go either way. I, I frankly do. Um, and I'm not even convinced anymore that the, the top would be any higher or lower uh, with or without the regulatory clear. I'm just not convinced of that because it's just the vast majority of the trading on the planet, it's still happening. Maybe it would be a little bit different because there's a, there, there are fewer people in the United States. But uh, keep in mind, there's still a few tr uh, platforms even in the United States where XRP is being traded. And it, that volume from other exchanges that delisted XRP it's, or, or suspended XRP trading, it just a lot of it just moved to those other platforms, frankly. And then uh, here's the second clip, and this is ridiculous. Um, so it's Max Kaiser with, uh, I believe this woman is his wife here. And I'm not going to play this clip either. We, we don't need to hear it. But uh, he, he, he's, this, is, this is toxic Bitcoin maximalism here. I do not like toxic Bitcoin maximalism. Um, he, he's, his, his idea here is that uh, Bitcoin, one coin to rule them all, one size fits all. Which is why I always joke, it's like, what's that you wear a size 13 tennis shoe? Here's a size 6, make it work. Because of course, cryptocurrencies all have different technical attributes, different people want different things from cryptocurrencies, and uh, Bitcoin, literally from a technological perspective, can't do everything. Can you imagine plugging Bitcoin into on-demand liquidity right now? Because you technologically could do that, but you'd add friction because it would be very costly and very slow. But you actually could, you could plug Bitcoin into on-demand liquidity. But XRP makes more sense. And so as XRP takes hold, if it becomes the standard for this use case, as, as, uh, as RippleNet gets built out, do you think that's going to magically go away? Or might XRP be here in addition to Bitcoin? It's completely ridiculous what he's saying here. But he said, quote, he said, you know, he's talking about XRP, Ethereum, and Cardano specifically. He wrote, he said, quote, they're all dog S-word. And I'm censoring for the children's is out there. But uh, that's what he said. They're all dog S-word. Bunch of nonsense. He will be proven not wrong. As time passes, you will see that a bunch of different cryptocurrencies do have staying power. Uh, here's a tweet from Eric Voorhees. I believe he's the CEO of Shapeshift. I'm not mistaken, am I? Yeah, there you go, Shapeshift. And, uh, and he wrote the following. Many coins are a scam is not equal to all coins that aren't Bitcoin are a scam. Why is this hard for people? Exactly. The, the, the maximalism is toxic, and I'm glad I have this platform so I can shout it down because it's stupid. It's one of the most unsophisticated market uh, 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 approaches you could take to understanding the market and crypto in general. And so attorney John Deaton retweeted that and wrote the following. How many times has the digital asset space been compared to the early days of the Internet? Why is it so difficult to accept that there will be more than one winner in this space? John, it's a great question, and uh, I, I have an idea. Uh, I, I think it's because people have uh, strange ideologies, right? And their ideology uh, and their, their heavy Bitcoin bags make it so they only want one cryptocurrency to win. But they're just not thinking uh, analytically for my perspective. It's just it's emotionally driven and it's it's just ideological and, and ideologically driven. That, that's what I think it is. It's a bunch of nonsense. Uh, I am not a fan of, uh, of Bitcoin maxi trolls, period. 
And so there we are. So you see these videos? This is why we cannot have nice things, folks. No, but that's why Moon Lambo has this channel, to, to clean up the messes that Bitcoin Maxi Trolls leave. And, I'm, and then I can place all of this into my Moon Lambo wood chipper. We can go on and have a great day. I am not a financial advisor. Do not buy or sell anything because of anything that I say or write. That would be a very, very, very bad idea. Until next time, to the Moon Lambo.